Welcome to this game project devlog. Last time I showed the current status of the game and some of the main problems I encountered. This week I took some time to redo and clean up some of the game's core code and started a simple combo attack system. I decided to scrap the 2D physics, which was causing some problems for this 2.5 game, and turn all of the game physics back into 3D. The biggest problem was that I lost the one-way platformers that came with the 2D physics, so I have to implement them myself now. I found a few different solutions, but in the end I went for a simpler approach. I disabled the play equation with the platform, while the player is inside a trigger hidden below the platform. I also found a bug with the ground checking code while testing this. Turns out you have to explicitly tell spare trick request to not check for triggers. Now that's fixed. I then decided to refine the player movement. I added a very small variable jump to give the player a false sense of control. I can change the jump height later, but for now I'm quite happy with the current values. Now it's time for some new animations. I went back to Mixamo and loaded a sword and shield animation pack, and also added placeholder sword and shield models for the player. I then replaced the player's animations for the new ones. Just for fun, I also added some bar idle animations if you don't move for some time. But while testing these new animations I started to notice some bugs. The feet of the player is way off when you attack while jumping, so I decided to start using animation layers to merge the legs of the jumping animation with the attack animations and make it a lot better. The first results were not ideal, but eventually I got it working. I then started implementing the combo system, where every time I changed something, something else in the code broke. So I finally decided to refactor the player controller. I turned the player into a finite state machine, which means it operates based on which state the player is on, walking state, jumping state, attack state, and that makes it much easier to debug and find problems with the code. I originally thought that it wasn't needed for such a small and simple game, but turns out that I was spending too much time debugging the code whenever I added some new actions. So I redid the player controller and put all animation related code outside to make the code look much cleaner. Now it's much easier to know what's going wrong. I'm still having problems finding the right way to control the animations. For now, the best way I found was using animation events, which will call a function in code whenever the animation frame is played. But that also has some problems. Sometimes the transitions between two animations can skip the animation event, and canceling animations like when you take damage can make it skip. Here, I'm using animation event on the attack to stop the player input until the animation is finished, so I need to make sure the inputs are re-enabled whenever the attack state ends, which the state machine is great for. And finally, I started making the combo system. It's a very simple 3 hit combo. Everything is working great, but the default speed is a bit too slow, so I set it to double speed. And now, it's not working anymore. It seems that setting the transitions to fix the time and increasing the speed of the animation was messing with the animation events, but disabling that and using a percentage instead fixes the issue. As the last attack combo is kind of a jump attack, I did a bit of research and thought this might be a good chance to finally try out root motion. Root motion is actually much more simple and useful than I originally thought. Root motion basically means the animation controls the object. It's used when you want very precise movement, and is especially useful for attacks with variable speeds. But turns out I can't use it. The way I set up my entities, I had the animator inside the player object, and for the root motion to work properly, I needed to have it at the top because it will be used with the player. So I decided to skip root motion and instead use a very precise animation events to start and stop movements of the attacks. In the end, I think the end result looked great. And that's it. I didn't have much time this week and a lot of it went into rewriting the code, so there's not much new things to show. The final models for the player weapons are already been made. 
I'm thinking about adding a rage or secondary skill system next, maybe a mid range or throwing attack, and then start working on making the enemy AI properly. The mix of animations are a real lifesaver, but they are also very limited for the kind of animations that I want. I especially don't like how the second combo hit does a step forward which looks a bit weird. They will do for now, but I think I might have to make some proper animations at some point in the future. I hope you liked the video, and until next time.